I'm Claire Moulton, the publisher at The Company of Biologists. I'm here at the Gurdon Institute in Cambridge today, um, talking to Tim Hunt and John Gurdon about their roles as directors at The Company of Biologists. John was chair from 2000 to 2011, and Tim is the current chair. Tim, you were on the board when John was appointed as chair. How did that come about? So we had to find a new chairman, and I think it was the general feeling at the time that there was one very obvious person well. who uh, <laughs> and at that time too we were a little bit divided between the more cellular and the mm. more mm. Um, f- sort of whole animal physiological oh, yeah. right. people so it needed somebody of you know absolutely unquestionable well. you know distinction and integrity to, <laughs> to, to <laughs> have a figurehead so everyone said let's see well. if John will do it uh, I remember being approached by Daniel St. Johnson, uh-huh. who said, um, would you be willing to be considered? And uh, in a sense, I was out of work because my college job had finished. Ah, and, so uh, the timing was the timing good. timing was good. So that was one factor. And then, of course, I've always admired the, very much the way the company of origins has um, gets its uh, the real scientists to run the journal. That appeals to me. Um, yeah. uh, and, and of course the profits go back into science and I've always thought that's absolutely an ideal uh, how journals should be uh, run and owned by scientists rather than scientists doing all of the work like writing papers, refereeing things, everything and the profit going into some publishing house right. so that's always appealed to me enormously so that was uh, uh, one of one couple of very good reasons John, you were chair for 11 years you must have seen some changes at the company what would you highlight? The introduction of professional people. So when I started, we had no, no one in your position. That's quite an important change. So you're familiar, really, with the publishing world. We had people like me who were just doing it, doing it on the side. As yes. So that was an important innovation, and I, I'm very glad that happened. The company also launched two new journals, both of which are fully open access. The first was Disease Models and Mechanisms, with a focus on basic research with a translational impact. And the second was Biology Open, um, publishing papers that are sound, but without trying to judge their importance. Biology Biology Open. Open, Yes, I thought that was an extremely good idea, because uh, this pain of uh, spending a year or more struggling with a a journal and get it through, and this one is eminently sensible. So I think that's a brilliant idea actually, and uh, it must be working well, I would think. I think it is working well, Mm. yeah. And when John retired from the board, Tim, you agreed to be chair. I've always been very fond of the organisation. I mean, for exactly the same reasons that John uh, mentioned. And and also, um, the directors are actually Mm. very agreeable, uh, sensible, intelligent, classy uh, lot. They have some really good ideas. Very, very good ideas. Mm. I mean, like the invention of these um, mm. workshops yes. to take over yes. from the CIBA mm. symposia. Mm. Yes, you know, that, that, I, that I think is mm. terrific. John, you organised a workshop yourself on epigenetic memory. How did you find that? Was, uh, I think it was very successful and, it, and the people, uh, you can invite a limited number of people. Right. So it's rather exclusive, but as long as there's some other meetings that aren't exclusive, I think that's fine. Um, and the people, all the people that we had seemed to be very appreciative of it. Um, so I think it's a very good thing. And so I think it was a good subject and um, the, uh, had a lot of help. And of course the site was particularly appealing and a major feature, I think, of those meetings to have a, a, a place mm-hmm. like that, or an, a lovely grounds to walk in and so on. So I think that's very important. You gave a public talk at the Royal Institution. Yeah. The thing that impressed me was that afterwards I went round and spoke to people who'd been in the audience. Mm. And a lot of the older people said that they, they, they really enjoyed the first talk mm. because it explained what stem cells were and what they mm. could do. And they didn't quite follow the second talk. Oh, I see. All the school children said that the first talk was what they'd already done in school oh, and the second <laughs> talk was, <laughs> was really, really, really interesting. Oh, <laughs> boy. Really, yeah. So I just wondered, you know, having done the talk, you spoke to a lot of people um, afterwards. Yes. What, what was that like? Well, you happily get a number of people who are interested enough to come and talk to you, and that seemed to show interest. As a matter of fact, they were mostly younger people, sometimes from schools. Um, 
uh, it's it's hard to know always, and I'm Tim knows this like me as well as me, that to get the right level is always difficult. You, you give a wonderful talk, if yeah, I may well, say so. I mean, you, but, um, you know, I it's, mean, it, it, it's always very clear. And I'm sure, like, uh, just like me, you do more and more of these sort of more general talks. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, one learns how to... I mean, you do get better at it, I think, I with think practice. One, I think yes. feel one probably does. We've talked about things that change the company. So you brought in a professional publisher, you've launched DMM, which was translational, you've launched Biology Open, we've launched workshops, which are about, you know, promoting the science. What do you think are the most important things for the future? What are the most important things for the future? That's a very good question. So it's predominantly my admiration for um, the scientists running the journals, mm -hmm. which they do everything else for. And I thought that's exactly how it should be, and it, but it is nice that COB keep going this way. The money comes from the community and goes mm. back into the community. Mm. The, the journals do make a, 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 a surplus, which, which actually goes to support these three societies. These societies really are, are wonderful things, and they support the young people. They mm. have meetings, regular mm, meetings. They do. Mm. Um, the surplus that's generated from the, from the journals goes into supporting travel grants for young people and um, scholarships, fellowships, and things of, mm. of, of, of that sort. Mm. I mean, you know, there really is a, 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 mm. a serious... Mm. amount of support of science. Mm. Mm. It certainly is. It's very substantial. So uh, that's a key thing that one hopes the company will continue to be able to do.